Hello everyone, and welcome to the SOS Telethon version of Now You're Talking with Dave McCabe. Skid is on its way to becoming a 501c3. If you haven't heard the news, we're here to catch you up. The Skid team is working to develop programming that will use core principles of improv to improve communication skills for many communities and audiences. Skid has always believed that improv was more than a performance art. It's a way to help people communicate, understand each other, listen, grow, all things we could sure use more of in this crazy world. In order for us to develop community programming and education, we'll need your help keeping the skit operating for the next year. The money raised will be used to keep our space and our community together during these challenging times. We are hoping to raise $24,946.36 for rent and utilities from now until the end of 2021. 2020 has been tough on so many industries. We know that not everyone will be able to help, but we appreciate any help we receive. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to visit that link in the chat to submit your donation. Oh, yeah, the hair. People have been telling me I've been giving off this Clint Eastwood vibe. You gotta ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do ya? Punk. Go ahead. Make my day. Click the link below and make a donation. You're watching Now You're Talking with Dave McCabe. Tonight's guests are Improvisers and ballroom dancers, Eric and Abby Foote. Improvisers and ribbon dancers, Becky Merbler and Kyle Weinschenker. Tonight's sponsor is the SOS Telethon. It's Abby and Eric and Eric and Abby and Abby 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 Eric 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 Abby 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 Eric and Abby Foot. Now you're talking with Dave McCabe. I first met Eric and Abby at the Steel City Improv Theater during jams, drafts, and ultimately became classmates in musical improv. Eric's intelligence and focused approach to his scenes is always entertaining. Abby brings a heightened sense of joy and enthusiasm and authenticity to all of her performances. Lifelong learners, as you can see, they have recently dipped their toes into the glamorous world of ballroom dance. Hey, I've known you guys for a few years now. I'm daringly starting the interview off with a two-parter. When did your improv journey begin, and what led you to the craft of improv? Well, I mean, I guess there's really kind of two answers to that because mm -hmm. um we started attending shows for who probably back in like 2014 mm -hmm. maybe this is before we were even married yeah it was like our date night because yeah. third date in um we were you know skating and I just kind of said to him, you know what I really like? I like Who's Line. I've been watching Who's Line all day, and I can't get the song out of my head. And it was so early in the relationship, it was kind of a gamble, because I, I didn't know if he'd be like... <laughs> but... So, um, so how did you finally <laughs> get talked into doing this? Um, yeah, so... After attending for years, it was really level one. The level one class was a birthday present mm -hmm. uh, in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, we had done the free sample. Actually, yeah, we did the free sample improv class first. Several times. A couple times, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and they're like, hey, you guys should just sign up for the class. <laughs> and we're like, you're right, we should. <laughs> Can you think of a mem particularly memorable scene? Ooh. Um, I mean, I, the, the, 
most memorable and probably my favorite um, thing I've ever been a part of was the couple prov uh, that we did uh, on Valentine's Day in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, it was one long scene, probably went on for 10 to 15 minutes, and it was just one uh, continuous scene about a uh, scientist, and that was me, talking mm -hmm. to an am amoeba, and then, you know, I think I was talking to the amoeba about, um, like, single-cell organism puberty, and then, you know, I came over and I became, like, the, the, the amoeba divided in half and yeah. I was the other one you know so I came like went and was mm -hmm. like, oh wow what is this crazy new world and it just you know before I think before we knew it it was mm -hmm. <laughs> we had filled our time slot yeah. it was really fun and the fun thing about the couples prov was uh, you didn't have to have obviously a two character scene um, so we had a lot of fun playing with um, hopping, you know, like over here, he's the, the scientist and then he just hops over there and he's the, uh, you know, extra amoeba. And then I hopped up and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> as a scientist, oh my gosh, you split into two. And then I popped back as the other amoeba. And so it was, it was very high energy doing um, improv with two people, so that was really fun. Are mm -hmm. there attributes of improv that you feel have enhanced your relationship? I think, you know, what the improv mentality really does is it um, allows us to have fun doing normal, everyday things. Yeah. Um, we watch TV shows and add our own characters to the scene. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few shows that we have no clue what the heck is going on in the actual show. Yeah, because we're too busy with our own storylines. <laughs> yeah. Which is so fun. Um, but also, you know, like an everyday occurrence like a, a hike turns into a, a random bit. You know, like the... Uh, the baby deer thicket home hunters. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, we'd be walking by and be like, oh, how much is that baby deer thicket? And Eric would be like, oh, it's like, I'd say 3.5 million baby deer walls. And I'd be like, well, I can't afford that. I, I'm just a little baby deer. I, I can only frolic so much! <laughs> yeah, and this kind of just um, sprung out spontaneously. Yeah. Um, while we were, hike we were hiking up at Fort Necessity, and mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of became something to talk about as we were going. This yeah. whole idea of baby deer house hunters. Yeah. That's excellent. As you rose through the classes, were there specific levels or groups that you found that you brought you the most fun? A group of classmates, maybe, or did you look forward to seeing ne the next week? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you're really fun to hang out with. Seriously, you are. And um, we really like hanging out with Robbie and Ray. We're uh, doing a, a game night thing over uh, Zoom tonight. And, I mean... I, Everybody is really nice. I, I don't want to like sit here and, you know, like sound like a high school girl. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> did you hear about Cecily? Like, oh, I just can't stand her, you know, but um, those people in particular are really fun. Um, and I think the, um, the group from our musical improv class, mm -hmm. they were just hilarious. And we really vibed well with that. Um, so, yeah. What kind of scenes do you most enjoy playing a part of? So I think what I always like the most is when I have an opportunity to do some rapid-fire heightening. Um, when we get one 
good idea and then we're just able to jump in with here's a quick heightening how here's another one um, I um, I did one scene with where the, the, the game just at, ended up being you know we had a character it wasn't I wasn't the one playing the character but um, she was solving people's problems by just drawing pictures or saying like oh it's okay because I drew you this flower and it was just such a perfect opportunity to just jump in and you know heighten the problems that she was solving from you know just a small thing that was you know like losing a job or something to um and, you know I ended up at a nuclear war and you know, so I was just able to tag in and be like, you know, now on the six o'clock news, you know, the worst has occurred, uh, but we do have some good news. And like, she knew exactly where I was going with it. And um, so I think any time that you get, I get an opportunity to just step in and be like, that thing that you just did, let's do it again. Um, are my favorite because it's just it's so satisfying to mm -hmm. st you know step in with some idea of where I want this to go and have the other person just pick up on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a class show that sticks out in your minds for any reason? I have a couple. I always I feel like I'm always the first one to answer, and <laughs> well, I well that's want... because I, I I talk a lot. <laughs> and I want to give you a chance to talk. Oh. <laughs> Aww. I was thinking the same thing. Um, <laughs> no, was so I, I was thinking that I talk too much and I wanted to give you a chance. And, Aww. Um, but level two and level three, those two class shows just, um, you know, ended up going amazingly well. Um, you know... I think for level two, it really didn't even feel like I needed to work. Um, mm -hmm. I played a character who was going to prison, but I was like going back, you know, I'd been there before. The whole game was like, I was saying hi to my old friends and they were like, oh yeah, we saved your bed for you. And it's like, oh, you got uh, my copy of the Da Vinci Code. I was looking forward to finish reading. That. It was like, ended up being like just this welcome home type thing and me mm -hmm. looking forward to getting back into the the routine of it and then um michael uh, miller one of the you know people who was in our class you know he was the guy who had gotten arrested with me <laughs> and he was just you know would pop out from the sidelines and be you know, in some, you know, horrible predicament and then just pop back to just kind of contrast with what I was doing. And mm -hmm. it's like everything just felt like the scene in the game was there and I didn't even mm -hmm. have to work for it. And he just walked up on stage and it was just the longest uh, monologue of a car and a gopher and like I don't even know <laughs> it was ended up being the funniest part of the evening because we just kind of took that batshit crazy uh idea and ran with it you know um so that was fun but. so tell me about performing musical improv <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. It's like it was made for me, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm always singing. Mm -hmm. How does it feel for you to sing a made up on the spot song? Very naturally. Very naturally. Um, before the pandemic hit, I, I taught as a substitute teacher. And I mean, I, that's all I did for the most part, I just kind of sang my instructions because put your name on the top of the paper with your student number doesn't register as well as put your name and student number at the 
stop and stop. So <laughs> it it's kind of, you know, just like, oh, hey, I, I got another audience and this time they're, you know, they, they can drive and legally vote and, you know, it, they, they find the singing charming. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you both are accomplished improvisers, and now I hear you've turned your fo focus to ballroom dance. What led you to Tripping the Lights Fantastic? Uh, so that was actually just like how our level one class was a birthday present. Um, the dance lessons were a birthday present two years earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all originally um, in preparation for doing um, our dancing at our wedding. Mm -hmm. So this was a few months before we got married. Um, the present was a set of eight lessons yeah. to um, go over some basics and uh, go over some stuff for our first dance. Because at that point I'd never danced before. Mm -hmm. At least not really. I mean like a yeah. little bit at high school prom and that's about it. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like nobody really dances at high school prom. It's just like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or bopping. I feel like everybody bops at high school proms. Right? Mm. Or twerks. Yeah, so, or twerks. And so this was... It was really just... Um, you know, my... In-laws thought it would be a good idea for me to at least have something to go into the wedding with. Mm -hmm. Um... Would you say they're right? <laughs> yeah, it was a good idea. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now, I need you each to answer this question simultaneously. No looking at each other. Okay. What's your favorite style of dance to dance to? One, two, three. Hustle. Cha -cha. All right, Abby, why? Ooh, that's a good question. Hustle's mm. just, it's very, it's our, one of the first dances that we learned. And um, it's insanely easy. It's kind of like the band kid in me is like, oh, this is just marching to a beat. But there's lots of, like, you can do a lot of turns, and I love turns, and the, the music's just very happy. Mm -hmm. Abby and Eric Foote, I'm so glad to have you as guests on Now You're Talking with Dave McKay. Hey, how about one more dance number? All right, quit fooling around, you two. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but seriously. I sure miss the theater not being open. But hey, when you're home, you have to improvise. One of the first skills we learn is pass the clap. Are you ready, Bob? That didn't go too well. He doesn't have arms. Let's see how our Zoom test group goes. Over, yeah, you, you, clap. Wow, that was, uh, hard. I guess it's tough whenever you can't really see people. Another game we do is Bunny Bunny. It's really about catching and receiving the energy from other people. Bob, are you ready? Bunny, 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 bunny. Okay, the two people on either side can do ticky tacky. Uh, this isn't gonna work. Zoom test group. Give it a go! Hey guys, it's not that hard. Bunny, 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 bunny. <laughs> well, you know, another game we like to play is red ball. So you take an imaginary ball and then you throw it and then Bob would say red ball, thank you. And then we could do other stuff too. So, Zoom test group, give that a go. Red ball. Red ball. Thank you. Thank you. Red ball. 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 Red
Red Ball. No, yeah, you. Red you ball. Sleepy Red, Red, Red Thank you. Red Ball. Thank, thank you. you. Red Ball. Oh, Red Ball. Thank you. Thank you, Red Ball. Thank you, Red Ball. Thank you, Red Ball. Red Ball. Sleeping Baby. Sleeping Baby. Sleeping Baby. Sleeping Red Ball. Thank you. Sleeping Baby. Sleeping Baby. Red Ball. Sleeping Baby. Sleeping Baby. Red Ball or Sleeping Baby. Well, you tried. Zoom test group, thank you so much. But you can really see, everyone, why we need to have the theater. So please donate in the link below and see if we can keep people together as soon as we possibly can make that happen. And now, let's try Hotspot. Please don't sing All Star. Please don't sing All Star. Please don't sing All Star. Somebody, somebody once told me the world was going to be I ain't gonna show me. Me. Here we are at Allegheny Cemetery. It is beautiful here. This would be a great place to interview Becky and Kyle. I first met Becky at Skit. We were classmates in level three. She had a bold approach and directness that made an impression in each scene she performed. She has a clear grasp of characters and commits to every scene. One of her most impactful characters was one of an aging stand-up comedian, complete with beer belly, trucker cap, cigar, and mustache. She owned that stage that night. It was during one of Riley's character improvement, characters only shows. And twice Becky has hosted the very adult dating game show. I then saw Kyle more and more on the stage. He brings a specific energy and knowledge base to his performances. What strikes me is how engaged he is with every scene. Kyle's truly present out there, and he supports his scene partners. There are more and more shows that Becky and Kyle started to perform together. Becky often swoops Kyle right up off of his feet and then into her arms during a scene. Their chemistry and dedication is undeniable. A standout joint performance is when they hosted a show portraying a Hamlet era um, couple and they came back time and time again in each scene and just totally committed to that. So here we are in Allegheny Cemetery and now you're talking with Dave McCabe. Becky Merbler, Kyle Weinchenker, now you're talking with Dave McCabe. Hey, thanks for talking with us. Absolutely. Hey, you know what? I'd love to start by asking you about the accents you used when hosting the period piece show. That was total commitment. What made you decide to go with that accent, and how did you prepare to, per to perform it? Um, we actually, we prepared for that show by doing the same, the same sort of formula with um, reading different passages of Shakespeare, but we were reading Hamlet instead of uh, Romeo and Juliet, and um, we just like, we wanted to be like a uh, sort of like a community theater troupe uh, producing that. <laughs> yeah, our coach, our coach daddy, uh, Caleb, was completely on us to, you know, do the Shakespearean voice, but heighten it and just make it like super extra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just make it as community college or... There was just no, over the top as possible. Yeah, we couldn't practice that. We practiced it for about, um, I would say, uh, six weeks, and none of those practices could we ever be tired for because we had to enunciate and keep finding a way to end uh, the structure. Yeah. There was a lot of play around with the format, too. I tell you what, it was total commitment. And I'm, you know me, I love my characters. I was just totally jostled dropped on whenever I was watching that performance so way to go so, so while we're talking about it do you have a favorite Hamlet um, performance like do you have a favorite with on TV show Laurence Olivier or you just went for Hamlet for the pace and syncopation of it all I actually have not seen any of the in wait how do you say incarnations what in I have not the, seen the, the Hamlet. Iterations. Iterations. Of Hamlet. I have not seen any iterations of Hamlet besides when Billy Hamlet? Madison <laughs> comes out with the skull yeah. and is like, 
to be or not to be. In a similar vein, there's also the the Hamlet in Klingon. If that they, they've reproduced all of Hamlet and it's in Klingon and it's done by like a Klingon. Uh, that's a that's a pretty moving, powerful performance. Uh, I'd recommend that to anyone. Since uh, we did Romeo and Juliet though on the stage, uh, we both really love Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes in Romeo plus Juliet. Um, it may be like really cheesy for now, but uh, the young Leo is so attractive. Yeah. yeah. And hey, Baz Luhrmann. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That dude brings it. <laughs> Well, clearly, you can tell you enjoy working together and performing out there. Is there a favorite moment you both shared, would you say? Um, with that show or any, any show? show? Yeah. Um, any show, any time! <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I, I really enjoyed a lot of our stuff with Uncanny Valley, um, or the team we were part of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was the one time uh, that sticks out. It was actually, I think, Uncanny Valley's like first show at Skit because I think our first show actually was at Glitter Box. Glitter Box. Yeah, right. But uh, it was at Skit, and we still had time, but all of us were puttered out. So Kyle just like went out there and started dancing with all he all he had, and like <laughs> just him dancing was getting laughs because he was moving and grooving, and yeah. I think like. It, Ray Stadelman and I came Ray, to sing. Ray came out, and then you came out, and eventually the scene morphed into like a, um, like a hoedown. Yeah. <laughs> With, <laughs> and it just like, I don't know, it was a really good like cherry on top of that night, like just going out with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> um, but besides that, I think our first original OG ribbon dance was uh, a a moment because we yeah. totally love that. Yeah, that was fun. That was that skit for um, what's that show called? It uh, was like, like a spontaneous act of joy, something like that. Something about joy. It was right yeah. after Thanksgiving last year. Yeah, and um, we just we we brought it out again, just like one hundred percent full commitment to yeah. that. Yeah, that's actually one of the things I love about watching both of you perform. 100% full commitment. <laughs> so Kyle, this one's for you before I get into the ribbon dancing. Okay. What about Becky do you most enjoy when you see her on stage? Um, I love just the amount of depth she can bring to um, like a scene or a show. Like she's always willing to like go to a place, like wherever. She she's a really strong supporter of her of her stage partners, and that's like invaluable for uh, you know for an improviser. Absolutely, <laughs> Becky. Same question. What do you most enjoy about watching Cal's performances? Well, I think first is just like working with him. If I have like an idea or just something I want to do, uh, he's always a hundred percent on that. Uh, <laughs> You know, he's dressed up like a woman for me, uh, and yeah. let me uh, carry him, and you know, just kind of like gave him a script that he had to like pretty much memorize in ten minutes. But when I watch him and I'm not participating, I like it that you know he is always there for his scene partners. Even if his scene partners like aren't playing well with him, he'll find a way to work through that. And still make the scene interesting instead of like doing that like no oh, this is my idea for no oh, this is my idea <laughs> you know thing he'll, he'll give up with he'll give up his idea to make like the scene go better for the audience and that's like our very uh, mwah, chef's kiss hell yeah <laughs> well that's the bruce lee version of being like water oh yeah <laughs> yeah be like water my friend yeah nice well hey let's start with this ribbon dancing I would love to hear how this began. I I don't even know how it began. Like I like I know we just got um the first the first ribbon dance we did was for Ray Stadelman and I think one of the Becky just came up um one day and was like, "Oh, do you want to be in this show? I've got this I've got this idea." 
what do you think? And it was like just ribbon dancing to um, the uh, the main theme to Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> and like, I was like, hell yeah, that's, that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I don't think I asked what do you think, which I think is like a nicer thing. I was like, hey, <laughs> hey, we should do this. And then you laughed, and then I think we agreed. Yeah. But yeah, we were, uh, we were actually like going on vacation um, like two days before we got the email. And so. <laughs> That's always how that happens, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we would be back. We were back like I think maybe like three days before the show. So I think there was like a couple times where we were on vacation that we'd play it and kind of jump around. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we were also on bud like a budget. So uh, I had two other morph suits that weren't matching. Um, but they were green and red. And since it's right before Christmas, <laughs> it was like perfect. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> But, um, you know, ribbon dancing in the future, you know, I, I, I sent um, something to a friend in Japan and asked, do you think that we could make it as improvise, improviser ribbon dancers in yeah. Japan? And she said, <laughs> no, not until it becomes popular, but we could teach English <laughs> until that happens. And so maybe, maybe that's our future. Yeah. Is, Making, you, gotta, you gotta sow the seeds now. Yeah. Sow the seeds of success. I mean, everybody's trying to focus on what they love most, and I love most dancing with ribbons and Kyle <laughs> to anime themes. Wow. Well, that's a great segue into the fact that uh, you provided a clip to us. Is there any setup to it? Um. <laughs> I mean, it. it, it, it it speaks for, for itself. itself. There it you does. Go. It speaks for itself. Yeah, which um, it's just to show, you know. I think you know, the last time we were seen ribbon dancing, we were just on stage at Skit with like black walls. But this is a very different clip, uh, filled with color, um, to show you just how cool improvised ribbon dancing is. Yeah, it's raw. It's very raw. It's very All right. Good. Without further ado, let's see this thing. Well, Becky, Kyle, best of luck for all of your new ventures. It's been a pleasure to have you. It's been a pleasure watching all of your great, great performances. And thanks for all the entertainment that you brought to us. Thank oh, you're you. welcome. Hey, everyone. We sure hope you enjoyed the show. And remember to click the link below to donate. Despite the name of this show, it can't come to life without the troop of talented folks that make this all happen. My deepest thanks and appreciation to Veronica White for the opportunity, the mighty Quinn Strand, Eric and Abby Foote, Steve Winnikoff, Emma Hurley, Sam Green, Chris Noonan, Lillian Leibovich, Sarah McAllister, Becky Merbler, Kyle Wanchecker, Monica Dunlap, and Bill, I truly can't thank you enough, so just take that hollering for all you bring to these shows. Tune in next time to Now You're Talking with Dave McCabe.